verse 22. Says, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. Fourth and final installment, your miracle is in the seed. Look at your name and say, I'm serious. Your miracle is in the seed. Tell somebody else, get it right. Tell them I said the seed. Your, uh -huh, your seed is the key to your miracle. Your miracle is in the seed. Somebody give him praise for the seed right now. Yeah, you may be seated. Your miracle is in the seed. This is the final installment, if God says so. We've been talking about uh, your miracle is in the making. Your miracle is in your mouth. Your miracle is in the press. And God said, before I release you, make sure you tell my babies that their miracle is in the seed. Pop three people and tell them I said the seed, the seed, the seed. Tell them your breakthrough is in the seed. Tell them your miracle is in the seed. Tell them your promotion is in the seed. Tell them your promise is in the seed. Tell them your turnaround is in the seed. Tell them your comeback is in the seed. Oh, y'all need to hear me up in here. Your next level is in the seed. Your success is in the seed. Your peace is in the seed. Your overcoming power is in the seed. Oh, y'all need to holler. Somebody say, the seed, the seed, the seed. How can you say that, Reverend? Hear me, hear me. Because we said that a miracle is the manifestation of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom is God's government on earth, and every government has laws. Somebody say laws. The kingdom of God has laws. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Here's somebody say, I like that law. Run me over. The greatest shall be the servant of all. That's the law. There are no demons running around in heaven, so there should be no demons running around in your atmosphere because in the kingdom, demons are against the law. Somebody ought to give him some praise that you're about to take over some stuff. And here in the book of beginnings, Genesis, God is putting forth a foundational law of how God operates in the earth realm. And it involves knowing what to do with the seed. Somebody say the seed. The seed is central. It's so important. If you flip over to Genesis 1, it's so important that God has it in the midst of all of those let there be's. Somebody say let there be. Y'all remember God said let there be light and there was. Let there be and there was. But he didn't move down the road too far before he got to verse 11, man of God. And he said there, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. In the beginning of creation, man, God introduces seed-bearing plants into the economy of the earth realm by giving seed and plants that produce fruit which produce seed, that produce more fruit, that produce more seed, that produce more fruit, that produce seed, that produce more fruit, that produce seed, that produce seed, that produce more fruit, that produce seed after its own kind for more seed, more better, more better seed for more fruit. Oh, y'all ain't getting it yet. God said, let there be seed, and there was seed. And then God said, let me create some more of the creepy crawlers on the ground and all of the other things on the ground. And then God, God got shown up good with it 
in verse 26 and said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Let them rule over everything. And the Bible says, so he created man and woman in his own image. Tell somebody you got it going on, you still look like your daddy. Look here, y'all, in the balcony. God was so excited that he had made the reflective image of himself, that he could look at you and see himself, that he couldn't help but to bless them. And look at verse 28. It says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, and subdue it, and rule over everything. Good God Almighty. He says, be fruitful. He says, increase. He says, rule. He says, take dominion. He says, be large in charge. He says, because you made in my image, can't nothing stand up against you. Everything is under your feet, under your dominion, under your authority, under your control. You got more power than you think. You don't let situations control you. You have authority over every situation, over sickness, over finance, over disease, over mess, over jokers who mess with you on your job, over every enemy, over every every imp. You have control and authority, dominion and power over everything. You can't let no professor get on your nerve. Nobody should be able to mess with you because you got it like that. And it's as if they ask him, well, how do we execute? And they say in verse 29, then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit in it. That will be yours for food. That will be yours to sustain you. That will be yours to make creative things happen in the earth realm. God says your seed will meet every need that you could ever imagine having in your life. Somebody scream one more time, the seed. God says, you got it made. But here's the problem. Y'all know human folks cut up. Adam and Eve got to messing around with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They just had to eat the tree from the fruit from the wrong tree. God banished them from heaven on earth. Cain killed his brother Abel because Abel had an offering that was pleasing to God, and Cain got jealous and killed him, as my cousin would say. And obviously, they still, humans still acted a fool, even God, though God had blessed them, so much so that by the time you get to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, look at it, Genesis 6, verse 5, the Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil at the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, you know what? I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth. The animals, the creatures, everybody, I'm getting rid of them because I can't believe this. But the Bible says, then enters Noah. And Noah was so extraordinary that in verse 8 of chapter 6, it says, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Here's somebody say, that's me right there. I got favor. Say it again. I got favor. How many of y'all remember the Sunday school story of Noah? Y'all remember God told Noah, build me an ark because I'm about to wipe everybody out. It's going to rain and it's going to be rough around here. And Noah, by faith, starts building God an ark on central, and there wasn't no rain seen nowhere. Here he is just erecting stuff, hammering away, and everybody hating on Noah, thinking that Noah been smoking something that God had made in the field. Y'all ain't hear me up in here. And, but Noah kept doing his thing. Tell somebody Noah kept doing his thing. But y'all know what happened, don't you? It rained. It rained for 40 days and for 40 nights. So much so that it wiped out every living creature. And Noah was snug as a bug in a rug in the ark just chilling with God. Y'all need to hear me. And the flood lasted for 150 days. 
Now, y'all know Noah was a man of faith because it had it been you or I, it's hard for us to be with family members over the weekend and can't go outside. Can you imagine being in the ark for months with some of your crazy cousins that you run away from at the family reunion? He should have climbed out the window, but he was faithful to God. Y'all ain't hear me up in here. Noah built the ark. And then finally God said, y'all can get out now. Check it out. Chapter 8, verse 20. First thing Noah does is built an altar to the Lord. And taking some of the clean animals and the clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of man. Even though they crazy from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have. Good God. Listen, listen, y'all. First thing Noah did was worship. Hear me. After being cooped up in there all that time, first thing he does was not run and scream, I'm free. But he erects an altar and he takes some, and he does a worship right there. Y'all need to hear me real good. I told y'all last week that the two things God, that really moves God, that he looks for is faith and worship. The woman with an issue of blood after getting delivered, first thing she did was fell at Jesus' feet, trembled in reverence, told the truth because God looks for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Y'all need to hear me. Noah had faith enough to hear God's word when there wasn't no rain in sight. He had faith enough to get in there and go when God told him to go get all these animals together. He had faith enough not to leave until God told him to leave. And the first thing Noah does when he gets out is to worship God. Why? Because worship answers the question, what shall I do? What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his many benefits toward me? See, Noah thought about how God had delivered him and wiped everybody else out. Even though he used to hang with some unrighteous people, God called him favored and righteous and delivered him and didn't deliver some of those other folk. Y'all need to hear me. Noah said, even though I deserve to die, God bless me, bless my wife, bless my children, bless their wives, and gave me a purpose in life. Y'all don't hear me. Worship ain't to come and applaud God. Worship is to come and think about what God has done. That you should have been toe up from the flow up. But God in his grace and his mercy gave you one more chance. You should have died with the last person you slept with. But now you're sitting here married and disease free. You ought to give God some praise up in here. Because had it not been for the Lord on your side, you'd have been messed up, shown up. You took the drink, but it wasn't nothing in it. I wish I had somebody in here who wasn't afraid to give him some praise. Listen, listen, grace and mercy. Tell somebody, grace and mercy. Tell them, grace and mercy. Tell them, grace and mercy. Grace is unmerited favor. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. I deserve to be on death row, but because of his mercy. Look here, Noah said, worship. Sam, but it wasn't a thank offering. Wasn't a first fruit offering. It was a burnt offering. A burnt offering symbolizes being totally consumed because God has been totally good to me. A burnt offering ain't nothing left after the burnt offering gets done burning. Y'all ain't hearing me. So I ain't going to give God a piece of something and then keep this for myself. I'm going to offer my whole body, all of me, as a living sacrifice. Because if he going to give everything on Calvary's tree, at least I could give him everything. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all. That, that worship was so good that God smelled it. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. 
Can you imagine man worshiping in such a way that your worship creates an odor and goes up into the nostrils of God and then God looks over the balcony of heaven and says, mm, that's good right there. I, I like the way they're worshiping me in the balcony over there because they're trying to get a little closer to me and, and they ain't up there trying to look down on nobody. They're trying to get a little higher to me and when, and when they worship me, they off the chain because they used to be off the chain for the devil. Y'all looked at me crazy when I came out here dancing but I used to dance in the club and say last call and try to catch me something to take home and y'all ain't hearing me but now all I want to do is catch Jesus so if I could dance in there surely I can come up in here with my offbeat self and give God a sacrifice to pray how you gonna dance in the club and then become conservative when it come to God Some of y'all just got out the club. I know it. If I put on the disguise and went in there, I see you up in there. Hey, ho, and then you come up in here quiet. That God lets you get out the club without getting shot is enough of a reason to come in here and give him some praise. No, bro, if you really knew how much power you had in your worship, you wouldn't be pity patting God when you come to worship. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Go on back to 21, 821. It says, the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma. And, and did, check it out. And it caused God to say in his heart, please look at the Bible. He says, never again will I curse the ground. Even though they're crazy, I ain't going to do it. Look, 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 y'all. Noah's worship released such aroma in the nostrils of God. It was so pleasing that God took it as prophetic intercession. Oh, please hear me real good. It was prophetically intercessory in nature. What are you saying, man? Noah's worship was literally received by God as an act of intercession where he allowed Noah to stand between him and people coming in the future. Wait, wait, wait. God said, your worship smells so good. He says that I am never again going to mess up the earth or destroy people by the flood ever again. He put a rainbow in the sky as a sign, like a wedding ring that said, I ain't going to never do it because we in covenant. Y'all don't hear me. Noah's worship was so impactful and an accessory that we're sitting in a new sanctuary worshiping him because of what Noah did in worship thousands of years ago. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. If you really understood the power of your worship, do you understand that your worship has enough power to help humanity 29 years down the road? Y'all don't hear me. Do you understand that your worship, even with children that are not yet born, that you can worship and bless folk to the third and fourth and fifth generation? No, you don't understand. Do you understand that we, did you, wait, 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 wait. The only reason you're here right now is because somebody in your bloodline was a worshiper. Maybe it was your great grandmama. Maybe it was your great great granddaddy. Maybe it was somebody in a cotton field in Georgia who didn't have a pot to piss in, but they knew that God was going to deliver them. And because they worship God, you get to be in the suburbs worshiping because they worshiped him in a shack. Do I have anybody in here who got enough prophetic vision to see that when you worship God, your grandchildren are blessed. Your great great grandchildren are blessed. Your great 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 grandchildren are blessed. Do I have anybody in here who can worship not for themselves, but for generations? Give God a shout of praise if you're really a worshiper. Tell your neighbor, come on, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let us act crazy so we won't go crazy. Every time you come in here, stop being cute, erudite, intelligent, and wait for the praise team to string and hit your emotions. When you come in here, know that you're coming for kingdom business, that you got a cousin who's a crackhead that God can deliver, that you got an uncle that's a pedophile that God can deliver. When you come into the house of the Lord, you got to do war in the spirit to make sure
Okay, let me ask one more time. Do I have any real worshipers in the house? I don't need no spectators. I need folk who know they on assignment. That baby girl, you can worship here and deliver somebody in South Africa. Do I have any worshipers? I really hope so. I really hope you made up your mind to move past being a church person to being a prophetic worshiper. Oh, I really hope so. I really hope so. Because, see, not only did his worship stay the hand of God for us, but his worship also made God reiterate and release the law of prophetic production. Oh, let me help you. Come on. Now, y'all ready? Come on. Y'all grown now? Y'all going to stay with me? Come on, be grown now. Genesis 8 and 22. He says, God says, I'm going to push forth the law of prophetic production. He says, as long, verse 22, Genesis 8, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, it ain't going to never stop. In essence, God was saying, not only am I going to bless you, but every time you see a change of season, it ought to remind you that the rainbow says that I ain't going to mess with you. Oh, hear me. More than that, he says, when I, when I look at you, I have implemented the law of seed time and harvest. Look at your neighbor and say seed time and harvest. 